Hi, welcome. My name is Jolie, and this is um, where we read. This is the series of daily reading of recovery material. So today is July 21st. It's July 21st, but time's going by. Time's going by. So um, thanks for coming. Uh, we'll get started. I will show you the books we're going to read. Courage to Change, Hope for Today, and One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. And so if you have them, let's go. You know the drill. We read these every day. So um, it'll be on page 203. I'm going to start with Hope for Today. And um, what do I want to tell you? Oh, stay till the end for the serenity prayer. Meditation. All right onward. Let's see what we got. Unity has, uh, unity was a foreign idea to me as a child. I never felt as though I were part of a family. I felt more like a bunch of strangers living in the same house. At best, my family had poor communication or none at all. It seemed no one was available to help me. In fact, I was usually, um, I usually was the recipient of criticisms and complaints. Instead of feeling united with my family, I felt isolated and alone. It felt good to be part of an Al-Anon group who shared many of my emotions, who had similar experiences. However, it also felt strange. It took a while to grow comfortable thinking of myself as part of a larger entity, knowing my personal actions could affect that entity. Fortunately, Al-Anon has principles to foster that sense of unity and to show me how to enact it uh, into my life. Tradition one spells out the basic purpose of unity, to accomplish the greatest good for the greatest number. The idea is that many can accomplish together what one alone cannot. I see tradition one at work in the process of taking an informed group conscience. Uh, tradition four reminds me that I do not exist in a vacuum. I always need to consider the effects of my actions on those around me. And concept one tells me that the future of Al-Anon rests in the groups, not in one individual. The Alateens remind me that together we can make it. I'm so grateful that Al-Anon shows me how to be part of a group so I never have to feel isolated and alone again. A feeling of unity is as close as the nearest Al-Anon meeting. And a quote from Paths to Recovery, page 139. When I see tradition one applied to the group level, it reminds me again how important unity is in my life. So this just talks about, for me, uh, it, it just uh, reminds me that there is a stability in this, in this uh, program, uh, in this um, structure where there's traditions and concepts and steps and material and like the groups. You know, so this way there's um, a concept of how to have that stability where um, we, I mean, we're a group of people that have a lot of codependent uh, behaviors and a lot of feelings. And so I, I believe that any kind of um, recovery group um, needs some type of structure. And that's just my opinion. Uh, it works, it really works for, for this, uh, for this group. And, um, you know, there, you know, whenever you you get with the group, there has to be some type of, they call it ground rules, right? Like ground rules to ground it. Right. So you gotta have something to sit on, have something to stand on so that if someone has, a, an emotional baggage or roller coaster in there, like, there's that, there's the, the baseline, you know, and where to come back to, how to, how to just like take a breather and stay present. So, 
I can identify with that. You know, dignity and grace are a good example for people. They're good for me. You know, I need to see that. The people working together. It's like it helps me to trust the group, like trust people. So from there, then you can kind of witness that everybody else is trusting. And you know, not everyone agrees. And if it's for you, yeah. If it's not, it's not. But it's uh keep it simple. That's that's it. Keep it keep it simple. Okay, let's read one day at a time. And um, page 203. This is the classic, right? I know there's um, a lot of there are people who are reading this on on um, on YouTube. So hello. Grateful, grateful to see that. Because we need this, right? So anyway, all right, here we go. Page 203. I can take strength and comfort from knowing I belong to the al Fellowship with its worldwide membership all working together for the same purpose, right? Give me a thumbs up for that one so we know we're together, right? Our little group is but one of thousands. What holds us together are many different nationalities and faiths. There are no rules and regulations, no management control, nobody to say you must do this or you must or you may not do that. There is, however, government by principle, as stated in the 12 traditions, which each member and each group accepts. Each of us in their own ways works for the good of the others. What binds us together is a common problem to be solved by understanding and mutual service. Al-Anon runs like a little wheel in the old song, by the grace of God. I don't know the song, but I agree. <laughs> I belong to Al-Anon. It is an important part of my life because it unites me in thoughts and action to people all over the world who share my desire to fill life with meaning and purpose. I do not know them, but they are my friends and I am theirs. Yes. The more each of us lives by al spiritual principles, the more we help each other, no matter how great a distance may separate us. I thank God for helping me to find al which is showing me the way to a new life. That's great. We're together. Yes, unity, unity. All right, right, so we pray each day that we may advance our steps to the road of understanding, that we may leave nothing undone that could have changed our lives for the better. And let us learn to understand ourselves first so that we have no time nor thought to analyze and criticize the compulsive addict or anyone else in our lives because we are occupied with ourselves and our learning about ourselves and healing ourselves so fully, correct? Yes, that's the, that's the idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, yeah, so we iron out the rough spots of the daily life, the life on life's terms. And um, we review this every day so that uh, we stay grounded and unified. Getting ready to read Courage to Change. And um, for those of you who are new, please subscribe or those of you who watch and um, wanna be notified, I'd really, that would be great. If you subscribe or you like or all of those and comment, I love the comments. So thank you for the comments. As long as they're appropriate, we're good to go, right? Get these weird, Sometimes you get some weird comments that are like that send people to websites. So I had to kind of like make sure that they're edited. I don't know why that the world is like that, but it is right. So here we go. Courage to change. And then we'll say the serenity prayer. Okay. 
So uh, the people I love won't take care of themselves. So I have to do it. How will they survive unless I dot, 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 question mark. This was my thinking when I came to Eleanor. My excuse for interfering in everyone's business. My needs seemed so unimportant compared to the constant crisis all around me. Alanon told me that I had other options, one of which was to let go and let God. When I think of letting go, I remind myself that there is a natural order to life, a chain of events that a higher power has in mind. When I let go of a situation, I allow life to unfold according to that plan. I open my mind and let others, other ways of thinking or behaving enter in. When I let go of another person, I am affirming their right to live their own life, to make their own choices, and to grow as they experience the results of their actions. A higher power exists for others as well. My obsessive interference disrupts not only my connection with them, but also my connection with my own spiritual self. I am my top priority. By keeping the focus on myself, I let go of other people's problems and can better cope with my own. What can I do for myself today? It's a good question. So the, um, there's a book called The Dilemma of the Alcoholic Marriage. And I don't have that, which I would like to get. So uh, let's read the quote. So it says, I will remind myself that I am powerless over anyone else, that I can live no life but my own. Changing myself for the better is the only way I can find peace and serenity. Uh, hmm. I like reading that. My obsessive interference disrupts. So this reminds me um, of me quite a bit. And um, in my past life, my past life, as I'm working this road of destiny here uh, with, with working this, the, the steps in the program, I, um, I am not that person anymore. Uh, I can fall into it again. And um, because I have teenagers and I had my, my one teenager tell me, uh, we had a therapist appointment and um, I, was, I asked if I can, you know, sit in one day. So I didn't get to sit in on, on, the, on the day that I wanted to, which was fine. You know, I was like, well, you know, God, God isn't in a hurry here, you know. So, you know, I pray, pray for um, God's timing. And so, uh, but it happened the next week, right? And one of the main focuses were to talk to me about how, um, how she wants to uh, feel how life is going to hand her the, um, how do I explain it? So that I stop worrying and I allow her to see what the consequences are to things instead of me trying to fix it or inspire her to do her work or something like that. Or, you know, she's like, mom, you know, I need to, I need to figure this out. I need to be able to have the, the dignity to live my life the way, you know, and see what happens so that I can learn. And um, I was really, I was really um, happy to hear that because I was over worrying. And um, the therapist was like, good job, you know, you talk to your mom and, you know, I was like, okay, I just want to hear what you have to say. And I'm really grateful. 
So we're learning different techniques, you know, about how to uh, communicate. So, um, yeah, I mean, now I can, I don't know, like I got the permission from her to let go, right? Uh, and um, I was trying to figure it out too. So I think that's where I was trying to talk to the, I was like, let's, I wanna talk to the therapist, what's okay and what's not okay. Because I have that distorted thinking from growing up in a in that alcoholic home where um, no one was really around too much, and um, so I don't know like if I'm trying to do too much or not enough, and I'm just like I don't have that model of how to do it, you know. So this, you know, that's why Alan's really great for that. So anyway. The, um, when I have, uh, I am present today, a new state of consciousness granted a gift, a new way of being. Yes. And I identify with the stories. I don't compare myself with the stories because I say compare and despair. So I just identify. I can just say, okay, I could see myself in similar situation. And so then I can see how things can resolve, let go of how others do it. So that's why sharing is really um, important. Going to meetings is really like part of that. So, all right, well, let's say the serenity prayer. I think that's good for today. And um, I encourage you again to, um, to join us every day. So um, we will read together. And um, here we go. Let's settle in. Ah, take a nice deep breath and be present here. Let go of those we may have any anger or resentment towards with this an attitude of gratitude for the lessons that they give us. And let them go for God's will. And um, God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So God's will be done. Amen. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.